Do you ever feel like you're teetering on the drum throne, just struggling to sit up straight as you incorporate both feet? This is a huge frustration because how are you ever going to play musically and have fun playing the drums and feel comfortable behind the kit if you're just struggling to sit up straight? Today we're solving this so that you can feel relaxed and comfortable and balanced behind the kit and use both feet with musical ease. I'll share with you two logistical tips that just might solve this for you instantly. And I'll share with you a crucial technique adjustment that'll literally save your legs from exhaustion and most definitely help you balance. And also I'll share with you some exercises that you can practice daily to help with building coordination between your feet and building core strength. Lastly, I will share with you my personal solution to this whole thing that's really helped me avoid balance issues over the years. It's worked really well for me, so I'm excited to share that with you also. Very possible that it will be your solution as well. So let's dig into this. You can do it. You can be balanced and comfortable and confident behind the kit. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. This is a channel that's all about giving you the nitty gritty, non-glamorous, sometimes not exactly super exciting stuff, but that helps you actually get results and actually become the great drummer that you are made to be. And so today, that's exactly what we're doing. We're talking about something that's not very glamorous and not that exciting, but if it helps you be more comfortable behind the kit, then that's huge. If it helps you play songs better and feel relaxed and musical and get to where you're being a musician and not a drummer worrying about balancing, that's massive. That's what I want for you. And so I'm excited about that today. Hey, before we get started, I want you to download my totally free guide. It's called the three-part daily practice routine how to make consistent progress in just 30 minutes a day. This guide is really cool because we talk about how to fix your weak hand and therefore build better time. We've got exercises for building coordination so that you feel more relaxed around the kit. As you build your balance today and then combine that with some coordination, you're gonna feel relaxed and comfortable and you'll be able to play more musically. Ultimately, this method helps you to get out of a rut. It helps you avoid that plateau and always know what to practice. It helps you form some goals, short-term, mid-term, long-term, so you always know what to be practicing. And it doesn't take long, just 30 minutes a day, that commitment, working through this guide, it's gonna help you a bunch. This guide has been helping thousands of drummers, so hope you'll join them. The three-part daily practice routine, yours totally free in the description. All right, let's get on with today's lesson. I mentioned a minute ago, two logistical tips that really could instantly solve your problem. It's very possible they will. And if so, awesome. Uh, the, the first one is, is this, throne height. So a lot of times when, when I'm hearing from a student that they're not feeling balanced, that things just, I don't know, they just don't feel comfortable behind the kit, they're trying to play heel up with both feet and it's just not making sense, their legs are getting tired, their core is getting exhausted, sometimes it's as simple as they're not sitting high enough. And it kind of seems obvious when you think about it, but the funny thing is with our us as drummers with our setups, a lot of times we don't notice the obvious problems because we've gotten so used to things the way they are. Maybe you're just sitting too low. Maybe it hasn't occurred to you that you need to sit higher because I know it really is kind of obvious, but we don't notice these things. For me, I was sitting way too close to my kick drum for a long time and realized I needed to sit further back, which is the second thing. Second logistical tip is maybe you need to sit further back. Maybe you're trying to sit too close. So those are really the, the two things that we're getting at here. Either you need to sit higher or you need to sit further back. Now, look at the difference here. So I'm sitting, this is my normal height for if I'm playing heel down. But if I'm playing heel up, look at how suddenly when I go heel up, my upper leg is pretty much level and I feel like my knees are like getting up high. It's kind of like riding a kid's bike or something where it's like your knees are going up and like hitting your arms. And it feels pretty awkward. But if I were gonna get more comfortable going heel up, really what I would wanna do is switch to about this height which feels super high, but I know my head's like out of the frame now. This is a good, I don't know, four inches higher probably, but for playing heel up, this feels way more comfortable. Suddenly I've got some angle here with my leg. You always want your upper leg sloping down. And if you're heel down, that means you could sit a little lower, but if you're going heel up, that means that your knee's gonna end up higher, so really you wanna sit higher, it just makes sense. And maybe you've been too cramped up where you're just so close that it's kind of this awkward, oh, I'm gonna fall over. Just like if you take a camera tripod and the tripod's so narrow, it's too easy for it to fall, but you widen it out a little bit. It's the same on the drums where if we can widen out our legs a little bit, it's so much more stable rather than being so cramped up. So give yourself some space. And like I said, there's no shame in realizing after years of doing something that 
oh, well, maybe there's a simple solution to it. I know for me, I realized I've been sitting way too close. So switching back to my stool, because I'm really a heel down player, switching back to my stool height here, what I was noticing, I was just, I was sitting way too close to my kick drum. And so it was kind of like, about like this, where I've got enough leg angle that it's okay, but it's a, a little bit cramped up. And it did not occur to me for so long that I would feel way more comfortable, my leg would get less tired, my core would get less tired, and this is talking heel down, if I just scooted back like four inches, five inches, a good bit, honestly. So suddenly I'm just way more relaxed, I've got more space, my foot's not sliding up the pedal, because that's the other thing, we don't want to have toes way up here at the chain, really we want to have toes down here. If you're playing heel up, I'd say be down here. For me, I like being heel down, I'll probably go about right here. So play around with those adjustments. Try raising your stool up, try sitting further back. That might be all you need. It's so simple that it's like, why did I not think of that? That's the way it was for me. So I hope that, you know, maybe, maybe that's all there is to it. Maybe that is a huge part of your solution. But if not, if you've already tried that and like, I don't, I don't know, this still just isn't working too well, let's dig a little deeper here. So the crucial technique adjustment that will save you from exhaustion while you're trying to, try, while you're trying to stay balanced is playing more from your ankle than your leg. Now, there's kind of, there's a, a method, a, a technique that's often referred to as the leg drop method, or like the leg stomp method, where you're playing so loudly on the kick drum, it's literally like your whole leg is playing. And that's only practical, maybe if you're playing like a four on the floor song and you just need to be super loud, but I personally have never done that. I've never been a fan of it. Most of the time, it makes way more sense to actually use your foot, use your ankle to play, even when playing heel up. So that means you're, you're using your core to lift your leg, you're using your leg muscles there, but instead of both legs going at it like this, you can just get your legs in position and then you can actually use your ankles to play because your feet are way more capable of agility and natural relaxed motion than your legs are. Legs are big, they're cumbersome, it's our biggest limbs. So why in the world would we wanna use an entire leg to play the drums? I personally think it makes no sense. So I would much prefer to use my ankle. Now again, if I'm playing heel up, I'm gonna switch to my higher seating height. If you haven't caught on yet, I mentioned, I'm gonna share with you my solution to this whole thing. I'm naturally a heel down player. That's why I would rather sit a little bit lower. And so I'll share with you all the why behind that and why I'm a heel down player. That'll be our last point today. But if I'm gonna play heel up, I'm still pretty far back here. Though you can get away with sitting a little bit closer if you're heel up, but I would much rather Basically, that's what we're getting at instead of Like I can't stay balanced if my whole leg is moving it gets crazy I got to hold on to something this doesn't work But if I can suspend my leg here, yes, it requires some leg muscle. Yes, this is definitely gonna require some core strength, that's a given, but you don't have to feel out of balance. It's, I think, again, I personally, I personally think it's impossible to stay balanced if you're moving your legs up and down. But if you get your legs in position and play this way, your core can keep things stable, keep things still, and then what actually, what that actually does is it frees up your left foot. I'm hunching over here to keep my face in the frame. <laughs> it frees up your left foot to actually do anything that you want to do over here. Because I actually am a, am a big fan of a method I call the leg bounce with the left foot. I like keeping time that way where I'll actually play like this. I don't know if you can see this from this camera. I will bounce my leg over here on the left foot for timekeeping. I'll link some additional videos below where I talk about that more. But I wanna be able to do that, which means I can't have right leg going crazy. I gotta have something consistent and still over here. I've gotta have a foundation so that I have the freedom to do that. And so that means, you know, you can either go heel down, which solves a lot of things. That's what I'll share with you a little more about in a minute. Or if you're going heel up, you've gotta play from your ankle. Unless you're just trying to play extremely loud and doing like a four on the floor thing, try to play from your ankle build up the shin strength to help make that possible so that you don't need your whole leg. And that way you're able to be a little more stable here and you'll feel way more balanced.
Another big reason for this whole foot pivoting thing is because I am a big proponent for bouncing the beater instead of burying it. If you're using your whole leg, you end up burying, versus if you're using your foot, it gives you the option to bounce the beater more. Now again, I've got some past lessons that go more in depth with this, and so you can dig into all of the whys and all of my arguments for this, but the simple argument is that when you let the beater bounce, it sends less shock up your leg. If you've struggled with knee pain, ankle pain, leg pain, whatever, or just straight up leg exhaustion on a gig, and you're burying your beater, that's probably why. That's the boat I was in, where my knee was hurting, there was just so much shock from the pedal coming up my leg, that as soon as I switched to bouncing, that was gone. And I was actually able to play cleaner, more consistently, faster, and just as loud, switching to bouncing. It just makes more sense. We bounce our sticks, why not bounce our beater? Now, okay, I'm gonna switch back to my stool because, as I told you, I would prefer to play heel down. I'm gonna demonstrate some exercises and I know that I'm gonna play them a little bit better, a little bit cleaner if I'm doing my comfortable technique. And then I'm gonna share with you why I like to be heel down and what you can practice to be able to do the same if you're interested in trying out what I'm doing. So let's talk about some exercises, three types of exercises for increasing your foot coordination because that's important. We need to have foot coordination if we're going to then talk about balance. We can't really focus on the balance unless we've got the coordination in place. But these are also gonna help you with building core strength. The first is super simple, alternating singles between feet. But of course, as I always say, focus just as much or more on the how, how you're practicing, than the what, the what you're practicing. So we're playing singles here, but focus on being stable, Sitting up straight. Without getting tight, without getting tense, just making sure you know, you're know you gonna feel your core working. Your core is definitely gonna be working. If you are a drummer, you are building core strength, whether or not you notice it. And if you feel like you're hunching too much or there's posture issues, um, of course I am no doctor, and so I can't diagnose anything, but I know that you do need to build up core strength and core strength helps support your back so you can sit up straighter and have better posture and avoid pain. And so know that core strength is something that's gonna be happening inevitably and it may be something to focus on. Just make sure you're sitting up straight as you're doing this. I don't know why I do my hands like this and sit here like I'm <laughs> reclining. I think it's easier to focus on the posture if you put your sticks down, fold your hands here, nice and relaxed, sit up straight on your stool, focus on your feet. And of course, if you're doing this heel up, same thing applies, sitting up nice and straight. Now let's do eighth notes with our left foot and let's do sixteenths with the right foot, or you could call it quarter notes with the left foot, eighths with the right foot, doesn't matter. Either way, it's a two to one ratio. We're gonna play twice as fast on the kick drum as on the hi-hat. Know that you don't have to go fast to get a workout from this. Our point right now isn't actually working out our feet. Our point is to work out our core and to get comfortable balancing. And if you're trying to do a lot of you know, fast workout stuff, do that one limb at a time. Like if you're working on foot workouts, then sit here and go just that by itself without left foot. Or if you're working on leg bounce over here, just do that. But then when you're working on core strength and posture and balance, do something slow. That way you're able to really focus on the posture and focus on the balance without too many notes going on. And then of course you could switch this around. You could go twice as fast on the left foot. Both ways are a good workout, because like I said, it doesn't really matter the speed, how many notes you're doing, it's the fact that you're playing something. And so it begins to work out those upper legs, hips, core, all that stuff that we need to strengthen in order to have better balance. But here's where it gets more fun. Let's do some doubles and paradiddles with our feet. Doubles, again, doesn't have to be fast. We're just going kick, kick, hat, hat. I think tempo wise, I'm probably going about 85, 85, 90 beats a minute as eighth notes. 
not very fast. So you can start there if you want to, go 85 beats a minute, eighth notes. That's just kind of the natural tempo I went at there without giving it much thought. And that feels like a very relaxed, slow pace where I can focus more on what's going on up here. And then from there in the paradiddles. And so, again, I know I can't say this enough, no reason to go fast uh, at first. At first, as you're building the core strength, you're working on balance. If that is our, our how, remember it's more important how we're practicing this, not so much what we're practicing. If our how is we're, we're practicing this in a manner to build core strength, to build balance, we need to stay slow so that we can focus on that. But as we build the core strength, as we build the balance, as we build some leg strength, then we can start going faster and begin to target what's going on down here. Until then, if you're working on speed, just do one foot at a time. Sit here and go whatever you're working on with foot speed, just one foot. That way you can focus on that without having to worry about this until you've really got the balance feeling good. So let that be a two-fold, two-part thing and be patient with it. Of course, these exercises I just showed you are in a free PDF guide with all the notations. So if you're a notation person, if you'd like to practice in that way where you like take the notation from the lesson and print it out or put it on your iPad, and that helps you stay organized, then by all means, go for it and grab that PDF so you've got everything that I'm teaching you today in this lesson. Take that to your practice room. Now, most importantly, even this is even bigger than practicing the exercises I just showed you. What's even better is just taking this and applying it to songs. So when you're playing songs, remember, find your perfect stool height, your placement, go a little higher, a little further back if you need to. And if you can do a little bit of left foot timekeeping, even if it's just on two and four while you're playing a song, just so left foot's doing a little something, and then practice sitting up straight, maintaining that good posture while you're playing songs. Again, that's the how, that's how we're approaching playing songs, that's what we're focusing on. Then just jam out and have fun, and as you're doing that, you're building the core strength. And video, video yourself, film yourself. So I've got my GoPro down here that um, you, pretty much if I were, practicing posture and focusing on posture. I would set up my camera somewhere over here so I could go back and watch it and see, all right, how straight am I sitting? How's everything looking? Do I look balanced? Have a camera out here, film yourself with your phone from your front side, see if you're angling one way or the other. It's so easy with smartphones to get instant feedback on yourself. You know, you don't need somebody else to tell you whether or not you're sitting up straight. Uh, have a mirror there, have a phone set up, whatever you gotta do so you can go back and evaluate. And so just practice doing that with all the other things you're already practicing. And so if you're tight on time, you don't have to add new exercises to your routine. Just apply what we've talked about today to what you're already doing and to playing songs. That's how you build strength fast. When you have fun doing it, then the working out, the exercising becomes fun because it's part of a song. And that's how you really build your strength quick. And it, it, that's how you log hours. It's how you log the time getting comfortable behind the kit. Kind of as a, as a bonus, my personal solution to this, I've been alluding to this throughout today's video, and it's kind of obvious if you've watched me play much and you see me now sitting here on my lower stool playing heel down, you know that my personal solution to this whole challenge of when you've got heel up, it's harder to balance. My solution is just to go heel down with my right foot. Now I can go heel up. I mean, you saw me play some stuff earlier, heel up. And honestly, if I were gonna play a gig, if I were gonna make myself go play a gig, heel up the whole time, I would definitely be sitting higher. Uh, that stool is about, you know what, let's, let's just compare it here. So. I don't know what the actual height of these two stools are. Uh, I'm almost 6'4". You know, that's not a huge difference. So, this stool is the height of my snare. And it only it looks like it's only a couple inches higher, but this stool is a firmer stool. This stool is softer. So honestly, when I sit down into this one, it probably is a 3 to 4 inch difference. So that's about how, how different the height is. And if I'm going from heel down to heel up, that's how much higher I feel like I need to sit. And so I could, I could play a heel up gig if I needed to. I'd probably want to spend a little time practicing and getting more used to it first. I could pull it off, but I've just always felt more comfortable heel down. And I've never had a problem playing as loud and fast as I need to heel down. And to me, it's easier to bounce the beater and just have a loose, relaxed stroke on the bass drum pedal from heel down. I like having my heel back here on the heel plate, having a good three inches between the end of my shoe. House shoes are the best for playing drums, by the way between the end of my shoe and the chain. It's good to have about three inches there. That way you can just have this loose, relaxed, full motion. Heel up is just fine. I mean, you do, you do what makes sense to you. I will not try to convert you to heel down if you would rather be heel up. 
for so many drummers, heal up is better. And usually I think we're split about 50-50 on this. So do what's most comfortable to you, but know that the people out there who say that you have to play heel down in order to play loud and fast, they're saying that because they never spent the time working on getting loud and fast heel down. It can be done because the, the more you play heel down, the more you build up these shin muscles. And so as you build those up, plus you've got all these leg muscles that are working, you can play just as loud as you need to and just as fast. And a lot of drummers are kind of using a hybrid where when they're playing quickly, like, For me, I would rather stay heel down, but there are a lot of drummers that are doing like, where it's like kind of a heel up. Either it's more of a toe point kind of thing, or kind of the whole ball of the foot, or it's more of a heel down. The important thing here isn't what you're doing when you're trying to play faster. The point is, where is your foot positioned? Make sure you're not too far up the foot plate. Your heel down, I think I'm a size 11 and a half. I like having my heel on the heel plate and that's a sweet spot. So that's why I like going heel down. I feel like it's more relaxed. It's easier to play soft. I'm gonna play something really soft. I'm playing super soft there. I feel like I don't have that kind of touch when I'm heel up. I can do it. But I just feel like it's not as consistent. I feel like I can be soft more consistently, more confidently and smoothly without having to think too much about it when I'm playing heel down. Plus, I can get as loud as I need to go. And I can go as fast as I need to go. So I have never encountered any issues with being heel down. Instead, I've been able to do more heel down. And then, like I mentioned earlier, that frees up because I've got my right heel anchored here, that really helps with the balance. Yeah, I'm still using a lot of core strength, of course, but I can do whatever I want to with my left leg. I can bounce it, I can keep time like this. And so I can keep time like that with my left leg bouncing and I'm still fully anchored and I'm sitting up straight and not feeling weird because I've got my right heel as my, my foundation, like my cornerstone here. And so that's what I like to do. That's what works great for me and that's what I've always done and that's what I'm sticking to. I have no plans to switch to heel up. I've actually heard of more people switching to heel down because they've realized it's more relaxed and easier for playing softer. It's more rare to hear a drummer switch from heel down to heel up. Though, sometimes it can be nice in a certain song to use a little bit of heel up whenever you need to, a little bit of heel down when you need to. And there's no problem in going back and forth. Maybe you use both. Totally fine. A mix of the two. No problem at all. But uh, I have had some students have success with actually switching from heel up to heel down. So if you're considering that, you're definitely not alone. And you might actually enjoy playing heel down more. All right. I hope this lesson helped you out. Before you go, though, I want you to do two things. One, leave a comment below. Tell me if you're a heel up or heel down player. Or if you use a mix of the two, like if you've got kind of a hybrid technique, or maybe you like to use some heel up if you're playing loudly or if you need to play fast and maybe you play heel down when you're playing softly. Maybe you do heel down for jazz, heel up for rock, whatever it is you do. Leave me a comment and tell me because I'm interested to know. I think we're usually split 50-50 on this. And download my free guide, the three-part practice routine. Know what to practice. The three-part daily routine for achieving consistent growth in just 30 minutes a day. This guide is really cool because it's pretty much that all-inclusive guide where you've got a little bit of everything. This is what you need to be working on. Fix your weak hand and build precise, fluid time. Build coordination by working through concrete exercises, concrete specific exercises designed to give you fluidity around the kit and ability to improvise and create. And ultimately, this helps you stop wasting time. You actually make real progress. You're able to set goals and know exactly what to sit down and practice. So definitely check out that guide. If you're stuck in a rut, if you feel like you just, you don't know what's next, what you need to work on, this will most definitely get, out, get you out of the rut. It'll give you some challenging things to practice and help you make some serious progress. So grab it, the three-part daily practice routine, your guide to progress in 30 minutes a day. All right, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope this lesson helps you out. Uh, honestly, this feels like it's a very simple lesson, but sometimes it's the simple things that are the most helpful and the most game-changing. I know it's been the case for me. 
scooting my school, scooting my stool back was a huge help. Maybe raising yours up is gonna be a huge help. Sometimes these little things make a big difference, but I hope this gave you some clarity and what to practice and maybe shed a light on some areas that maybe you hadn't noticed before. So hope this lesson helped you out. Be sure to subscribe, download that guide. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Stay non-glamorous.